It is time for it is time for members' statements. I recognize a member from Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize a bond of friendship that spans the years. In the summer of 2012, Rosa Trent were faced with the worst of fears, a cancer diagnosis of one of their own. Brent is one of the most competitive people I know and a cornerstone of our team at university. But as, his, uh, as the treatment robbed him of his ability to compete, a community came together to support a friend. To keep the competitive spirit going, they began mini-putting, a sport where they could all still meet on an even playing field or green, as it were. And while this particular story is a tale of success, Brent is recovered and is expecting his first child, these friends knew that the legacy had to continue. And so was born the Registered Association of Mini Putters, or RAMP, and each summer is now held the Robert Mulligan Memorial Invitational, the only mini putt tournament cancer research fundraiser of its kind, where this team of friends still comes together to do what small thing they can so that the stories of other families may end happily. Competition and community service speaker. A day of humble beginnings is now one of Peterborough's key fundraisers in the battle against this terrible disease. So thank you to all the contributors, the putters who braved the little mountains, the widows of the course, who each year renew the bonds of friendship and commitment to a cause. Occasionally, I get to spend time with this team of friends, and for this, I am thankful they are the best people that one could know. Congratulations on achieving this year's fundraising target, and good luck in all the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? I recognize a member from Perth, Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, in June, I spoke about the people working so hard in our long-term care homes. I thank them for, using, uh, for rising to the enormous challenge of COVID-19. More challenges are still ahead of us. Many more of us will still will need long-term care. We'll need more staff, PSWs, nurses, administrators, activity coordinators, volunteers, and many others. We'll need modern, accessible buildings because these buildings are the residents' home. We'll need them in the cities, in small towns, and in, in the country. And all of them will need to be prepared for future pandemics. For all these reasons, our government is focused on the future of long-term care. We gave the go-ahead to projects like the new West Perth Seniors Community. New beds are also coming to Knollcrest, Royal Terrace, and Strathcona. But there's so much more to do. I want to thank the long-term care operators that have put in applications for new beds in Perth Wellington. I have met with many of them and written letters of support. Make no mistake, as, an, as MPP, I support every single one. I've said it many times and I'll keep on saying it. Working with long, all long-term care operators for profit, not-for-profit, in municipal homes, we can meet this moment. We can build the future of long-term care in Perth, Wellington, and across Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for London North Centre. Thank you, Speaker. With parents returning to work and kids returning to school, the wait times at London's testing centres have never been higher. Lines are so long that Londoners are getting discouraged from seeking out testing altogether. They're giving up and going home, Speaker. Last weekend, Mary, a mother in my riding, needed to get her children tested after they began showing COVID symptoms. Mary could not get them tested because London's only testing site open on the weekend was already at capacity by 12.30 p.m. That's less than two hours after it opened, Speaker. Other Londoners, like Karen, waited nearly four hours with her elderly mother before the two of them could get tested. Parents and caregivers, like Mary and Karen, are trying to do the right thing. For months, this government told the public to get tested, but now this same government is not stepping up to the challenge. As demand increases, so must our testing capacity. Speaker, I'm asking this government to give Londoners peace of mind and help alleviate the burden on the Carling Heights and Oak Ridge centers. We need more testing by expanding testing centers, their hours, and hiring additional staff. The health of Londoners must be a top priority. Thank you. Member statements? 
The member for Scarborough, Agent Court. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. On September 21st, the Armenian community of Ontario, along with all of Canada, celebrated the 29th anniversary of the independence of the Republic of Armenia. After 600 years of colonization by the Ottoman Empire and genocide, the Armenian people rose like a phoenix from the ashes and established the Republic of Armenia on May 28, 1918. Regrettably, the short-lived Republic was incorporated into the Soviet Union in 1920. Today, the Republic of Armenia is a member of the free world. The history of Armenians in Ontario dates back to 1887, when Mr. Garabed Nergararian settled in Port Hope, Ontario. Since then, Armenian Canadians have become an integral part of our society. They have excelled in the arts and science, business, academia, and politics. As a token of their appreciation to Canada for providing them a safe heaven, many Ontario Armenians conscripted in our defense forces and fought in both world wars to defend the values and the principles of, for which Canada stands for. We are proud to have such a vibrant community that has contributed so much to our province and country. Their presence in Ontario enriched and strengthened our mosaic. Congratulations to Armenian of Ontario on the 29th anniversary of the independent. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, the climate crisis deepens on a daily basis, and yet this government sleepwalks towards disaster, either rolling back the partial steps that have been taken before, undermining half measures that are already in place, or outright going backwards. In the city of Vancouver, people have recently experienced some of the worst air quality in the world because of the giant climate-stoked forest fires just south of them in California, Oregon, and Washington. The climate-stoked hurricane season south of us is already breaking records, and we are only halfway through it. And yet, we have a government that is planning to ramp up gas-fired power plants, which will accelerate the climate crisis. At the same time, we see the Premier and the Prime Minister agreeing to further weaken the system of reducing industrial climate pollution, an example of outright irresponsibility. It, as, it is as if there was no crisis, as if we had all the time in the world to stop this unfolding emergency. Speaker, we have a responsibility to protect human life and provide a future for ourselves and our young people. The way this government is going on climate we won't be able to do either. Thank you. The member for Cambridge. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. You know, Mr. Speaker, there's a ruling class in this country, and they are all quote unquote family. No, that's not a quote from the 1800s when Upper Canada was ruled by a small group of men known as the Family Compact. That's a quote set on March 9th by a lobbyist from Crestview Strategy to Cambridge resident Jim Carhalios, informing Jim that he had to support Aaron O'Toole to remain in the Conservative Party of Leadership race. Party brass preferred this candidate. After my family didn't take the deal, Jim was removed from the race twice. But stealing an election wasn't enough for Mr. Rogers, O'Toole, Senator Don Plett, Lisa Raitt, Don Nolan, and Derek Vanstone. We needed a court victory to repay campaign debts. A few weeks later, 19 volunteers on the local PC Riding Association were expelled without cause by a fellow member of the supposed ruling Conservative family, Brian Patterson. Mr. Speaker, I don't serve this made-up ruling Conservative family. I already have a family, and I serve my constituents. Mr. Speaker, I am grateful for the support of my family and from Canadians across the country, and would like to specifically say thank you to the support of the 19 people expelled from the Cambridge PC Board who chose to stand up for democratic principles rather than trying to gain the acceptance of some made-up ruling Conservative family. Thank you. Member Statements. Member from Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. On August 19th, I was joined by the Premier as well as some of my colleagues from neighboring Mississauga Ridings at Trillium Health Partners Hospital to, to participate in a funding announcement on behalf of the Muslim community. 
COVID-19 has been the greatest challenge this province has faced, and it has become a defining moment in our history. We will honor those who struggled, became ill, or passed away, and we will celebrate those who stood up and made a difference in big and small ways to help those who are struggling through these difficult times. Mr. Speaker, last month, the Muslim community handed over a check of 100000 the first installment of a $5 million commitment to the Trillium Health Partners Hospital. I'm so proud of the community for coming together through the most challenging times to support the healthcare facility that benefits our greater community here in Mississauga and Peel region. I'm grateful, as I'm sure we all are, to know that the public can count on individuals in the community to ensure our hospitals and the important, important work they do are supported and ready to serve the needs of everyone. I want, I want to thank and congratulate the community for their outstanding generosity. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Lack of broadband access has long been an irritant in rural Ontario with COVID-19. It's become a crisis. Uh, in 2018, the NDP had proposed a long-term strategy in this House of $100 million a year, a billion dollars over 10 years to actually come to grips with it. It passed unanimously. The government responded with a $300 million promise over 10 years. And the Premier himself stated that he was going to be on this like a dog with a bone, in that folksy way that only he can say, like a dog with a bone. In the 2019-2020 budget, there was indeed over $31 million allocated to rural broadband infrastructure. But in the report from the Financial Accountability Office, it was laid out that actually not one dollar of that $31 million had actually been flowed through to fund rural infrastructure. So the Premier was on it like a dog with a bone. But in the country, we know what dogs do with bones. They bury them. And that's the same as what this government did with the $31 million. And sadly, sadly, that is a recurring trend. What the Premier says is going to happen and what actually happens are often never the same. And for rural broadband, that has got to change. Thank you, Speaker. Next, we have the member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise today to pay tribute to someone that truly displays the Ontario spirit. Russell McKay was planning on leaving $5,000 for the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario in his will, but his daughter Crystal suggested that he donate it now. And with that, Mr. McKay decided to walk the check 125 kilometers all the way to Chio. On Tuesday, September 5th, he presented a check for $105,000 to Chio. Mr. McKay was not the only one that displayed the Ontario spirit. Passing drivers honked their horns in support, with some even pulling over to give him money to add to his donation. A Tim Hortons dropped off sandwiches, donuts, and coffee. And in my, uh, my friend, the MPP for Canada's riding in Carp, residents of a nursing home cheered him on and gave him money as he passed by. Mr. McKay, when he arrived at CHEO, said, I thank each and everybody who helped me, sponsored me. I'm overwhelmed by the amount we raised, and we're still raising more until the end of the month. This year has highlighted the importance of supporting each other through tough times. As the MPP for Ottawa West Nepean, I want to thank Mr. McKay for his tremendous work to support a critical hospital in our community. And for anybody watching at home, if you would like to donate, you still can by going on the www.chiofoundation.com website. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy to rise today to speak about an excellent initiative that I had the pleasure of working with throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Pasta It Forward is a local project from Vaughan started by Frances Tabolo, president of the Italian Canadian Foundation and her friends, with the idea in mind to help members of the community who may be unable to access food with a hot pasta meal. 
To date, Fast Aid Forward has prepared and delivered over 55,000 meals thanks to the generosity of countless donors, suppliers, and volunteers who have worked to ensure the initiative is the success we see it today. These meals have been delivered to many different people in need, including persons who have found themselves food insecure, to hardworking frontline healthcare staff and public safety workers, and even to persons in our remote First Nations communities. I was thrilled to collaborate with Pastors Forward on numerous occasions when we delivered meals to hardworking uh, personal support workers, for example, at Amica Residence Community in my riding of Mississauga Center, or at Chartwell Roberts Peck Residence, as well as Copernicus Lodge in Parkdale High Park, and to the nurses at my very own hospital working in the emergency room at Etobicoke General Hospital. Pasta It Forward exemplifies the best of the Ontario spirit. It shows the ability of great people of this province to organize and collectively tackle rising dilemmas. I continue to be inspired by the work of Ms. Tabolo and everyone else at Pasta It Forward. Because you know what? A little pasta can go a long way. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Before I ask for oral